you can go back to 2021, we actually had the Olympics, if you can recall. And uh, I was looking forward to watching Simone Biles uh, perform in gymnastics. Like a lot of other people, I was shocked and disappointed when she announced that something had gone wrong and she had forgotten how to twist. Especially in the US, it's like as a country, we all were like learning in real time about this science of why an athlete can be at the very top of their game and then all of a sudden have a mental block and suddenly it's like their muscle memory disappears and they can't do one of the core things that they've been training to do. Uh, I wanted to use that as a lead in today because I think it can be helpful when we think about something much lower stakes like learning guitar and why it is so hard to remember the licks that you play. It's just nice to know that, you know, someone at the top of their game is still susceptible to the same things that we are. So I'm gonna talk about this problem in three different levels. The base level is learning licks inside of a solo and remembering that solo as one piece. Then the next level is being able to play that solo later on a different day, a week later, something like that. And then the third level is being able to recall parts of that solo at any point when we are playing, if it's a similar kind of song, being able to pull from our arsenal of licks and just have the ones that we learned in that solo magically bubble up so we think to play them. So let's tackle these in three different levels. So level one, learning a solo, one lick at a time, and then trying to remember it together. I think the biggest mistake that a lot of beginner and intermediate players make when they're approaching learning guitar is they drastically underestimate the number of times you have to repeat something in order to have it stick. So the first change that you can make in your mentality is as you are learning a solo one lick at a time, when you get a lick down, I'm not saying don't feel good about it, but don't tell yourself that, okay, now that's mine. Now I have it. Because the truth is, the reason you have it is because you just did it. It's right on your desk over here. But then as you learn more stuff, it's going to get pushed to the side and eventually it's going to fall off unless you go and pick it up and put it back. Just because you've played it doesn't mean you know it. So as you're going through a solo, one lick at a time, you learn one lick, then you learn the next one. You can learn a couple of licks in the row and then discover that you have forgotten to how to play the first one. And I want to tell you, that is not uncommon. That is actually quite common. And the way that you solve that is to learn everything in context. So first you learn it in isolation. Then you go back and you put it into context. What do I mean? Let's say you have a solo that is six licks long. You learn lick one and then you learn lick two. Now, if they're short, maybe you go on to lick three, but no more than three. And then you go back and you practice licks one, two, and three together. The reason for this is just because you've learned them in isolation, that doesn't mean you know how to use them. You need to not just repeat the notes of lick three, but you need to repeat the transition from lick two into lick three. And you need to do that transition probably as many times as you did the repetitions for lick number three by itself. Then you go on to lick four, maybe you do four, five, and six as a bunch. There are no hard and fast rules for how many you practice at a time, but don't fool yourself. If you move too far past something that you've practiced integrating, you will forget it. And then you will have to go back and you'll have to relearn it. And it'll probably go faster the next time, but there is no way around the fact that when you try and learn a long string of licks together, you will have to go back and practice them together. Let's say you've been hitting this solo pretty hard for a couple of days in a row, and now you can play this solo front to back, even if you can play it at 50% speed or 75% speed. At that point, it is tempting to say, okay, I know this solo, but I want to challenge you that is just level one. You still don't know that solo. You've just learned how to play it for today. So let's go to level two, learning how to remember that same thing next week. So if you have ever had a memory foam mattress, you'll know that it's not hard to make an impression on it. But our brains are sometimes a little bit like memory foam in that they're very impressionable but they have an incredible ability to return to the exact same shape 
once you take away the thing that's making the impression. So you just got done learning that solo and you did, I don't know, maybe hundreds of repetitions and you're feeling good. So you move on to a different course or a different video or something. And a week goes by, two weeks go by and you try and go back and you find out, oh, there are big holes in what I remember. And you start playing it and it's like, it's almost like a part of your knowledge has just like disappeared. And so your brain has kind of like a memory foam mattress. Not everything indented the mattress to the same degree. And the things that were a little bit close to the surface have now been pushed out and it's kind of went going back to shape. So the second thing that you need to do differently is you cannot learn a solo today or this week and then abandon it and expect to come back and remember it. You need to revisit that solo you need to give it some space because it's not feasible to play that solo every day of your life. The key is you have to revisit it before parts of it disappear. And then when you come back to it, you might need to brush up on stuff. You have to revisit it over time to continue etching that solo into your muscle memory and subconscious. And so this is kind of where the athletics thing um, comes into play. There's a lot of things going on when you memorize that solo. There are the notes that you know, you hear the solo in your head. There's the visual part of it. You know where to go on the fretboard. So there's a visual reference, but then there's also the muscle memory of it. And so there's a lot of different aspects to what it is when you have internalized that solo. It's more than just notes that you hear you've internalized the notes, you've internalized the look of your fingers, you've internalized the motions that your fingers do. And so it's a fairly complex thing. And it takes time for all of that to kind of be etched into your muscle memory to the point where you can't forget it even if you tried. And so repetition at the micro level, repetition at the macro level, and then repetition kind of on the temporal level, going back over time and just etching that solo deeper and deeper. And even there, I would still say you don't really know the solo yet. Now, why would I talk you all the way through that only to say you don't yet know the solo? Because for me, the real test of whether or not you know something is whether or not you can use it in another context. I'll give you a perfect example. Last December, I did my first Johnny Winter course, and it was so much fun to put together because his phrasing is completely different than anything I've played before. And uh, for weeks, I just buckled down to the point where I could play this solo in my sleep. But a funny thing happened after the course was done, I tried to use some of what I had done in that course mixed in with the rest of my playing and it did not go well. And I had a little bit of embarrassment. Why? I learned this solo stone cold. I can play it all the way through. But when I try and play the stuff that I've ingrained over 20 years, it feels like a complete mode switch to switch and use some of the licks from that solo it almost feels like somebody swapping in a different tape. And that's when it hit me that I had memorized that solo, but I had not practiced using it. I had not practiced using the licks in that solo anywhere else. And so in the context of a solo, you've learned the individual licks and then you learn how to tie them together and you practice that. Then you revisit it over a period of weeks and you play it periodically. You are learning that self-contained solo. But if you take any of those licks outside of the context of that solo, you have to go through the same process learning to use it when it's not surrounded by this similar progression of licks. So you do indeed know the licks in that solo, but you know them in a very predictable context. And when you're trying to improvise using all of the other stuff that you've learned, those transitions between the stuff you already know and the individual licks in that solo 
that's also something you have to practice and do lots and lots of repetition of. You know, I want you to think about those three phases the next time you feel bad about not remembering something. Memorizing it on the lick level, then putting it all together as a solo, which you learn start to finish. Then revisiting it and keeping that impression in your brain alive and making it go deeper and deeper. But that's not the end. You then need to take the things that are in that solo and experiment with using them in the context of other soloing. Uh, That's, in my mind, how you really know a lick. When you have learned it in its context, you've practiced that context over a period of time, but you've also taken those things and used them out of context in with a bunch of other licks. So as long as you're playing the right style of song, you can then use that lick somewhere else. So I don't know if if this is useful or if I'm just telling you stuff you already know. Uh, if you have any thoughts, feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Uh, you guys are the lifeblood of the YouTube channel. And if you're watching this on Texas Blues Alley, leave a comment there. Uh, and I remind you, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, but also consider joining our Locals program. For the past 15 years, I have authored over 60 courses Maybe it's 80. That's a whole lot of friggin' courses. And all of them are for people who like the style of things that I teach on this channel. So if you love these free lessons, you're going to love our courses. And we actually have some tools that our members use to study that tie into the very things that I've talked about today. That's a video for another time. If you have any questions, just email me. Uh, Otherwise, until next time, thanks for watching.